Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is lesson number 30 of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the previous lesson, we learned all about the fundamentals of colors. In this lesson, we are going to make the undercolor of our Pagoda model. Making an undercolor is not as labor intensive as the body canvas that we made together. In fact, it may be one of the first things you get to work on when you begin your apprenticeship. So, if you want to increase your chances of getting a placement with a tailor, learning how to make an undercolor will make you a lot more useful than when you don't know how to make one. For our pagoda model, we're going to make a self undercolor, which basically means that we're going to use the same fabric as the jacket to back the undercolor up. We do this for a more professional and uniform look. The construction is a bit different than a felt undercolor, but you'll learn that in no time. So this is what we're going to do. First, we're going to cut out the canvas based on our color pattern. Then we're going to base it to the fabric. Last but not least, we're going to pat them together to make them one. Are you ready? Let's go. Take your color canvas. If you're working with our improvers bundle, you'll have two pieces of color canvas. One of them will have the selvage cut diagonally compared to the rest of the edges, and the other one will be perfectly straight and square. You need the one that is diagonal like the one I have in front of me because this is cut fully on the bias. Now, if there are creases in it, simply put an iron on top and remove the creases. No need to wet or soak this canvas. Then fold it right down the middle. Gently with your fingers crease the folded edge like so. Next, take your undercolor pattern and align the center back with the fold. If you've drafted your pattern yourself, don't forget to shorten your pattern for the reasons that I explained at the end of the previous lesson. Your grain line should already match the direction of the canvas grain. Hold firm, take a good pencil or a piece of chalk and trace around. Mark your shoulder line this will be a good reference for when you're putting the collar on. Now, depending on your pattern, the angle of this line may be different, but that's irrelevant. Now, hold firm, cut out. Now, open up and see whether you have any blips right on the stand edge. If not, that's fine. If you do have it, simply correct it to create a smooth line. Now, for this, we don't need to worry because this is already marked on our fabric. So all you have to do is to remove this crease and continue. Take your fabric wrong side up. We have already marked with chalk the outlines of our pattern. Remember, this is on the bias and very weak and flexible. So when you put your canvas on top, it may not exactly match your chalk lines. Not to worry, simply move this over like so, until it does match your canvas. You have, after all, cut them from the same pattern. Make sure that you have at least 3 eighths on the edge of the stand. Next, mark the center line on your canvas. Then, mark the stand. Our stand is inch and a quarter, that's 3.2 centimeters. Just simply give a few lines here for your reference. Next, thread your needle and simply baste on the markings that you have for the stand. This does not need to be a perfect line yet. There's going to be a lot of distortions and this is just temporary. Next, thread your needle and start basting a quarter away from the edge of your fall. Time to mark our inlays. Mark inch and a quarter away from the sides. Mark an inch and a quarter away from the gorge. Mark about one inch, that's two and a half centimeters, right on the side here. Last but not least, mark your shoulder line. Simply lift up the canvas to see your mark stitches. Color is marked and it's now ready to be padded. Before we start padding our color, 
Let's briefly go over the reason why we mark these lines on the specific areas with those specific measures. When we make our color pattern, as you already know, we allow some inlay so that by the time we have stretched the color or have made changes to the coat, we still have some room to maneuver around. You could say that the area inside these lines is roughly the final shape of our coat color pattern. When I made this pattern, I allowed inch and a quarter on the sides and on the gorge and about an inch on the back. And so that is the reason why we mark them this way. Something I have to say about the self undercolor is that the edge of the fall is going to fold over onto the canvas like this once we have cut out the canvas. So we can't pad too far over because otherwise we would have to remove all the stitches so that we can fold this over onto itself. You'll see that once we get to finish the color. Let's take our needle. Let's put our thimble on. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to pad from this point where our gorge inlay starts. This basting here is representing our temporary break line. And we're going to start padding from where the break line and the gorge inlay intersect all the way down to this point and go up and down until we have completely covered the stand. Take one of your threads and what you're going to do is going to turn it so that you make them loosely standing away from one another and you're going to split the thread into two. Take one end, hold everything in your hand like this and pull and separate them from one another. If it stops, all you have to do is to simply pull a little bit from farther back and start again, like so. The reason why we do this is because we don't want the threads to be too thick because once the fabric goes on top of the canvas and it's pressed, we don't want the stitches to show. So use a very fine thread. Machine thread is usually quite thick. Overlocking thread, if you don't have the waxed silamide threads as I have here next to me. To start, bring your needle in a little bit farther back, allow it to travel between the two layers so it's not visible from the back and then bring it out right on the point where you want to begin. Just like we did with the body canvas. Once your thread is hidden, then just go back right behind where your thread came out and make a small bite and pull. That's it. So when you look at it from the back, you see a tiny dot. You should not see the threads on the back of the collar. That looks very, very bad. Let's do a nice 3 8 stitch length that's one centimeter and go all the way down and up and down and up and down until we have completely covered the stand once you get down to this point what we're going to do is we're going to fold the collar roughly from where the break line is put a pin in there so that that's held down and then continue padding our way up and down and up and down just be mindful that your chalk lines don't fade away and you continue padding into your inlay because that would be a waste of time. Now, once your thread gets short and you want to fasten off, simply go right behind where your thread came out and allow the thread to travel between the two layers like so and pull the needle out. And now your thread is going to be hidden between the canvas and the fabric. To start over, thread your needle and then bring the needle inside a bit further from where you stopped. Travel through the layers, come out right at the beginning of your bite, hide the thread, go right behind your thread and come out and continue just like we did on the body canvas that way your stitch looks like one continuous stitch and that makes everything look a lot more professional it's always good to leave the last quarter of an inch that's about six seven millimeters completely free especially on a self undercolor because what's going to happen is we're going to crease this break line once we're done and then 
mark a new stand edge because this edge is going to be distorted so we want to have a clean edge and then once we have done that we're going to fold the fabric over like this and pad over it so there is no point in going all the way right to the edge of the canvas so as you can see i've left about a small centimeter free so that i can do that now let's move on to the other side and turn this around because i'm working from right to left from center outwards because i'm right-handed if you're left-handed you're going to be working from left to right center outwards this is what we're going to do let me mark this so that you can see this a lot better i'm going to pad inside this area just the same way as i did for the stand once i'm done with that i'm going to show you how to pad this side Fold it, thread your needle, and start. Make sure to split your thread every time you're threading your needle. All right, so as you can see, we have padded the color so that it can fold back on itself and crease around the brake line. That, of course, is a primary example of relative layer length in action. Now, as this color goes around the neck, what we want to do is to encourage these sides to slightly roll downwards, like so. That will make them sit nice and flat on the shoulder and the chest area. However, I have to say that the collar is going to be in a concave shape once it's put on. However, we don't want to encourage it to go any further upwards because that's just going to stand away from the coat and it's ridiculous. So this is what we're going to do. Fold color over and parallel to the line that you have drawn on your shoulder line which is this chalk line that we have here start padding the color up and down and as you pad roll it and roll it and roll it and roll it further out okay okay so as you can see this side of the color is now slightly rolling downwards so if we get this color to go around the neck this part is always going to curl down it's not going to curl up now we're going to do the other side and i must say as you are padding this and you notice that your basting is not allowing the fabric to move over just cut the basting and allow the fabric to move freely because if that doesn't happen then you're not getting that relative layer length going on for you so let's do this once you're done padding put your needle back Make sure you don't lose it. And now let's have a look and see what we've done. Well, first of all, we've padded the color in two different directions. The first direction is horizontally as we're looking at it. And the other one is vertically. So one direction, which is horizontally, allows the color to fold back on itself and to really sit snug and not flick up at the back. The other direction, the vertical direction, allows the color to sit round on the shoulders and on the chest without flicking upwards and giving that amateur student look. Now, what we have to look is look at it from the back. You should only see a tiny dot when you have padded the color. If you ever look at a color on a jacket and you lift up the fall and you see big stitches, that is not really a sign of fine craftsmanship so make sure you practice and don't worry if your finger starts to look like mine because the needle will go through your finger and sometimes it's going to bleed sometimes it's going to hurt but over time you'll manage to get the right amount of needle through the material without poking yourself to death so let's take out the basing threads and then examine everything a little further first of all let's give this color a good press it's okay to press it flat there is already tension in the material underneath it which in this case is the fabric so you won't be removing the shape by pressing it flat as you can see i haven't done big long loose stitches to hold these two layers together what we need is an even coverage of small stitches to really hold the canvas and the fabric well together the color is going to receive a lot of pressure and tension 
and therefore will go out of shape very quickly if we haven't done the necessary work. So we're going to do small stitches as we've done to add to the longevity of the collar. Now the next step for us is to mark the permanent break line on our collar. However, once we've done that, we also have to trim a new edge for the stand because by the time we mark the permanent brake line and stretch the stand, the distance between the brake line and the edge of the stand is going to distort and narrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark a slightly higher position for the brake line, then shape the stand, then fold the brake line, and then from the brake line, measure down to the edge of the stand. So let's do this. Take your ruler and a pencil, and instead of marking an inch and a quarter, which is the true width of our stand, I want you to mark an inch and three eighths. That's about three and a half centimeters. So just make a marking here and go all around with your pencil. Now, all we have to do is to connect these dots together for our brake line. Once we've done that, what we're going to do is to take our spray bottle, apply some moisture on the stand and stretch it out. Why are we stretching it out? If you've seen the lesson on edge to fold transfers, you will also remember that any concave line that wants to fold back on itself whilst maintaining a concave line on the folded edge needs to be free of tension. So that's why we are doing it. We're going to fold a concave line back on itself and keep a concave line on the folded edge. Once you stretch the stand out and your brake line is now almost an opposite curve, what you have to do is to just smooth out the rest by going with the iron over the fall and the areas that the iron creased up, like so. Then we can simply fold the collar back and crease it along our brake line. If you have to, spray again and keep on creasing until your stand can lay completely flat. Flip it over and press from the other side. And now you have creased your brake line and what we now have to do is to measure from the brake line towards the edge the true width of the collar stand which is going to be an inch and a quarter. That's about 3.2 centimeters. Now one thing I want to mention is in case the outer edges of your brake line are not folded exactly on your pencil marks or chalk marks or pen marks, don't worry, just allow to have a very smooth line because that's all that matters. The rest is going to be trimmed from the crease line and so is definitely going to be to the measures that we intend it to be. So let's do this. Inch and a quarter right from the brake line all around. So as you can see, some areas have become narrower and I can't really mark those areas because my mark would be right on the edge of the canvas. But whatever is left and excess is the part that I'm going to be cut out. And now we have a color stand that is inch and a quarter all the way through. What we have to do now is the following. Thread your needle, fold the fabric that you have left over, over the edge of the stand, like so, and start padding from where you have your visible padding stitches. So, right on this edge. And as you pad downwards, keep folding the fabric against the edge of your canvas. And stop right where your inlay begins and your padding ends. Fasten off, take the color, crease the rest of the fabric against the canvas edge. That's going to be the inlay area. That's the first stage of your self under color. Now, it may be that during the fitting, you have to make some changes to the color. So you're gonna have to open this area up redraw, remark, and do all sorts of things. So at this stage, I don't really bother with trimming the seam allowances to a perfect line and things like that. We'll do that once we get to finish the actual undercolor. 
Now, during the finishing stages of the undercolor, there's going to be a few other processes involved, which we are going to do once we get to it. As for now, that is it. As you can see, the construction of the undercolor on its own is not very complicated. It's just basically two layers that are joined together with a padding stitch. You may find it a bit more difficult to put the undercolor on the jacket, but we'll try to make that as easy as possible in the next lesson. Now, we have created this series for everyone around the world to follow along, regardless of the resources that they have available to them. That is why these videos are and will forever be free. But there is a problem. The problem is that even though everyone can benefit from these videos and learn tailoring with these lessons, not everyone will have access to the materials that are required to have the best possible experience. We understand that problem and therefore have come up with a solution. That is the good news. We have assembled two bundles that you can purchase from our website so that you have the best possible experience. Those two bundles are the Foundation Bundle and the Improvers Bundle. The Foundation Bundle is what you'll need if you want to make the traditional model, which is a very basic and easy to make jacket to go through the foundation of coat making. The Improvers Bundle is for those of you who understand the basics, have got some experience and now want to sharpen up their skills by stepping up towards a more advanced model, which is the Pagoda Model. All you have to do is to simply visit our website, which you can find by clicking on the link in the description of this video and treat yourself to one of these bundles to make the most out of these lessons. My name is Reza, this was today's lesson and I look forward to seeing the next one. Take care. Generally speaking, making an undercolor is not as elaborate as the body canvas that can we... <laughs>